Question number one, Phil Twyford. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is for the Minister for Building and Housing. Does he believe there needs to be a review of the building code, given the damage sustained by modern buildings, such as Statistics House, in this week's earthquakes? Uh, Mr Speaker. The Honourable Dr Nick Smith. I raised with the Ministry doing a review of the seismic standards on Tuesday in light of modern buildings like Statistics New Zealand suffering unexpected structural damage. The issue is not the building code, but the more detailed standards. I expect to finalise the details of that review later today. The overall performance of most buildings in the quake was good, but there may be others like Standards House that require further investigation as more information comes to hand with the hundreds of assessments that are taking place across Wellington currently. Supplementary. Supplementary question. Phil Twyford. What does he make of the fact that none of the damaged buildings that are now closed featured in a Wellington City Council list of 663 earthquake prone buildings published on November the 3rd? Mr. The Speaker. Honourable Dr. Nick Smith. I assume the member is referring to a very detailed issue with respect to the ductility of columns of a range of buildings. And the first thing I'd make the point is that is just one of many issues that relate to the seismic performance um, of a building. Uh, councils uh, have followed up and ensured the vast bulk of those buildings have had new assessments. Uh, the information that I saw in the media that the Molesworth House building was one of those is incorrect. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. Does he think that the standard of compliance with the building code should be reviewed in relation to the modern buildings that have sustained significant damage? The Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Uh, Mr Speaker, as I said in the primary question, I'm satisfied with the overall performance um, of buildings. Uh, seismic engineering is actually a very complex field such that Monday's earthquake focused in the spectra of those buildings between five and ten storeys. So for those building owners that are sitting, hey, my building's a one or two storey building and it's earthquake prone, I don't have a problem because it survived Monday, are mistaken, because we could equally have an aftershock or another earthquake that's in a different part of the spectrum in which those buildings would be very vulnerable. And that's why I'd urge members of the public, building owners and the parliament to ensure that they use the very best seismic engineering expertise in making these technical judgments about building safety. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. What advice has he received on whether the siting of multi-storey buildings on reclaimed land was appropriately taken into account in the consenting process? Mr Speaker. The Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Uh, Mr Speaker, one of the most important learnings from the Christchurch earthquake that's internationally significant is that the level of shaking experienced by a building does vary significantly with foundation type. Now, that was not understood well prior to Christchurch because for most earthquake events, there's only been a single seismograph record. The uniqueness of Christchurch is that there were over 100 seismographs installed in the 1990s that enable that information. So with that, there has been changes in engineering practice and standards that today the type of foundations that a building is sitting on impacts on those loadings. The member may be aware that the government adopted a new earthquake loading standards in September that took on board those learnings. Supplementary question. A supplementary question, Tim McIndoe. Thank you, Mr Speaker. What advice has the Minister had about why many earthquake-prone buildings in areas like Cuba Street suffered relatively light damage whereas other larger buildings suffered significant damage. Uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Uh, Mr Speaker, that is very much a function, not just the strength of the earthquake, but about the frequency of the shaking. Each building has a different natural frequency. Monday's earthquake was particularly vulnerable for buildings between six and ten storeys tall, but any subsequent aftershock could be in quite a different spectra. For instance, if it was for a very short period, then it would be those one and two storey buildings that would be more vulnerable. And that is again why I stress that people need to take, building owners, 
good seismic engineering advice and not draw simplistic conclusions about how strong their buildings are? Supplementary question, Grant Robertson. Has he received any specific advice about Statistics House and the impact of the earthquake on it? And does he believe that Centre Port, the owner of the building, could be more helpful in being more open about what has happened to the building? Mr Speaker. The Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Mr Speaker, yesterday I visited the Statistics New Zealand building uh, and was briefed both by Centre Point and their engineers about what they thought were the difficulties in the corner where some of the T-slabs um, have collapsed in one corner. Um, the advice is that because of the very long nature, and remember the major earthquake in Christchurch was about 12 seconds. Uh, this was a 90 second long earthquake and as a consequence the number of cycles that the building experienced. Uh, but having said that, there does need to be more detailed, thorough investigations as to whether there are learnings from the building standards uh, to ensure uh, that we have the very best science and standards applied to new building construction. Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. Is he satisfied that public safety is being adequately protected with around 60 buildings in Wellington not in use because of earthquake damage and the risk of how those damaged buildings might behave in the event of another large quake Given that GNS says there is a 30% chance of, a, of another quake of magnitude 7 to 7.8 in the next 30 days. Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Dr. Nixon. And Mr. Speaker, the new earthquake prone building legislation that this Parliament passed in May, and of which some members of this House chose to criticise it as an overreaction, I would suggest that members of this House actually say this government was absolutely right to take a national approach to requiring older buildings to be upgraded. Now, the additional challenge we have now is that there are buildings such as those on Molesworth Street that have suffered significant damage from Monday's quake. Uh, and in my view, the Wellington Council is taking a proper approach of cautiousness with cordons around those. A further issue that I've discussed with the Acting Minister of Civil Defence, which may require additional measures, is ensuring that those buildings that do pose a risk are brought down as quickly as possible, and we may need additional legislation in that regard. Ironically, earlier this month, I took a paper to Cabinet to approve policy changes around improvements in the Building Act from the Christchurch learnings. We may need to bring forward those legislative changes to be able to react more quickly, given this week's events. A supplementary question, Madam Fox. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Is the Minister aware of any dangers proposed to parts of Parliament buildings which specifically house the press gallery? And if so, are there any immediate plans to strengthen that area, keeping the members of the press gallery safe? The Honourable Dr Nick Smith. The specific responsibility for buildings rely with their building's owners, and in this case, the Speaker might not be pleased, but he is responsible uh, for the buildings on the site. I would, however, say that, firstly, Parliament House is base isolated with internationally leading technology and is one of the safest buildings. Equally so, the Beehive. Uh, it is correct uh, that the annex uh, in which the press gallery is located uh, is not up to full 100% standard of code. Uh, it is not identified. Uh, as in being under 33 per cent as an earthquake-prone building, uh, but I would commend both the Speaker and the Leader of the House on the work that they are doing to upgrade these buildings and make it safer for all its occupants. Oh, supplementary question, Tim McIndoe. Thank you, sir. And further to the Minister's answers uh, to some of the previous questions, what changes have been made since the Christchurch earthquakes to improve our systems for managing seismic risk? Mr. The Speaker. Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Uh, firstly, there's been the significant changes to the Building Act that were passed earlier this year, and of which the government is currently consulting on the detailed regulations to implement. The big change there is that we have always in this country left it to councils to determine the issues around earthquake-prone buildings. Now we have a national approach. Secondly, a big gain since Christchurch has been a new field guide for assessments and the training after an earthquake event. This gives me far more confidence about the quality and the consistency of the initial assessments being done on buildings in areas impacted by Monday's quakes. Thirdly, 
there has been over a dozen changes through new standards, new practice notes and new guidelines. Uh, learning from Christchurch to make sure that our earthquake uh, systems are the very, very best. Question.